No, like get them a 3D printed thing that just like <laughs> it's just like they have to wear it and it hooks the microphone you do, like, onto you, you it. Could take the uh, the hard hat ratchets and you could like you know the ones that like you put the hard hat on you crank it. Yeah, it. You yeah. You just take one of those, just mount the microphone to it. There you go. <laughs> just that's every. You got that gun mount. <laughs> you can just that would work. Trade it out. <laughs> and leave the gun on it so we can shoot. You can shoot, shoot each other. <laughs> when someone says something, someone else doesn't like, you just take it out with bite. Oh, that's the word of the day. <laughs> 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 So we all safe. Are we recording? Oh, okay. Welcome <laughs> oh, to the hello. Safety Third Podcast. This very special episode. Uh, we've got Ren from Corridor Digital. But also, you have your own channel that you don't really publish on anymore. What was that called again? Uh, it's called Surrender. Surrender. When's the last time you posted on Surrender? At some point. Years ago? <laughs> yes, last year. Last year? Last year, I think. I mean, of... at this point now, it's just like I treat it like my Instagram. It's just like every, whenever I feel like it, I put something up there. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. I like, I, I kind of like Instagram or any of the social medias are sort of like my, where my jokes go to die. <laughs> I just post something and whatever happens, happens. I don't care. Yeah. I don't care if it does bad. I mean, I, fo I focused on it a long time ago. Like when I was really pursuing YouTube on my own, there was like a brief period in 2013, 2014, mm -hmm. where I was like trying to do that but making like super complicated short films in less than half a year was challenging. So I, yeah. I basically, <laughs> yeah. so if you don't know, Ren, uh, you work for Corridor, Corridor Digital. Digital. Corridor Digital being one of the many OG, or pretty OG, pretty OG. channels. Like I wouldn't say they're OG OG, but they're like definitely. I mean, it started in 2010. Yeah, see, that's that's oh, like yeah. I feel like the 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 super OG or like the 2007. Yeah, uh -huh. that's like Michael was saying he started in 2007. Yeah, there's I pretty much those guys are pretty much gone at this point. There's not there's very there's not yeah. a lot of those. There's like Phil yeah. DeFranco, he's still around. He's still yeah. Uh, Michael Vsauce. Yeah, Markiplier. No, 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 no. PewDiePie. I don't think so. Was pretty, PewDiePie. He pretty. still wasn't that early. I think he was still like. I still consider early. like those guys starting in the 2010s at some yeah, point. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Like think, they're yeah. like second generation. Because the whole like let's play sort of rise on YouTube started with yeah. YouTube's changing of prioritizing watch time. Yeah. Mm. That was when it was like, oh, you mean we're gonna reward Roos Rooster Teeth? I think. Oh, that was early. Who was, yeah. was Red versus Blue? Was that Rooster Teeth? Red, yeah. yeah, yeah. Now they that started was, in 2003. Wow. Yeah, I was yeah. Gonna say Red yeah. versus yeah. Blue was before YouTube. That I remember, like, you had yeah, to Halo, go to a separate Halo Two, Halo, Halo One. Oh yeah, my dude, I remember God. buying their DVDs to yeah. play on Whoa. my Xbox 360. Yep, <laughs> that's insane. That's I like it's it's hard to think that there was an era of like content creation both. For well, YouTube, I, yeah. I remember on YouTube, Red versus Blue got uploaded to it, and I was like, "Oh, it's on YouTube now." Yeah, I like, remember YouTube, that too. Actually, YouTube's the new thing, and yeah, like, oh, I can go like, watch like all the f old episodes. Yeah, I was like, "Oh wow, they're actually putting it on YouTube." Now. What was yeah. it on before that? I think their, their website, like, e bombs world. <laughs> No, they hosted. Was, I think they, they, they did their, their really? own thing. You're watching pirated rip version. <laughs> I think I was. Yeah. yeah I remember there was a, a thing called, uh, yeah. and we actually met someone the other day. Channel 101. Oh my god! I, I, know I this. met someone from that. So Channel 101. Yeah. We, so yeah, Justin, Justin Roiland came out of Channel 101. Uh, oh. That's right. Which I think we, I, if we ever have the opportunity to do a podcast with and him, Dan would be amazing because Harmon. Uh, Harmon. Uh, Harmon. Harmon. I think. Harmon. I think they okay. all came out of Channel What's 101. Channel 101. Yeah. So Channel 101. If you don't know, which you probably don't. Which is why I'm asking. Yeah. <laughs> is a I thought you were old, a good host. like uh -huh. video kind of contest. Uh, it was almost like a forum for making videos, mm. but it was like a weekly or monthly competition, and it's hard to describe. So it's like you would a, you would a submit group it, of people. people would vote on it. It was like a small community, but like yeah. a big community. Like it's like a medium sized community. You would you'd submit your short film. They would host it on their website. You would watch it. You might mm. even have to download it or something at the time. Maybe I don't I've, even know how. Maybe I've heard of it. You probably heard of it. And then people would vote, and and so many shows that got high enough score would then get to go on. And they would make another episode the next month. And, and it was show, shown like locally at the, at the I think they would the show bar, it locally too, bar. but I think maybe it was to only local. So, I don't remember. Yeah, it was like only. But you could watch them online too, but you may have had to download. I don't remember. Um, and so if your show got selected and they're all like, these shows are like, we're talking like, they're not great. Like they're sort of bad. Good. Are they like short film shows or like are they like films. the animated type stuff anything. with like the vectorized, really any, low file size? Oh, like flash. Oh, yeah, no, it was, yeah it, flash. I'm thinking flash. It was, <laughs> it was, it was, uh, it was all video, but some Rest of the, some piece. of this was animated, but I think it was distributed as a rendered video. Nice. And uh, if your show didn't win, you just could come back and resubmit next month, but it had to be something different. Oh, I see. I see. And so some of the shows would go on for a while and, you know, week, a couple months. Oh, cool. Some would just die immediately. <laughs> um, 
and so like the lonely island came out of oh, okay. so okay. like you can go Before on their now. really early youtube and you might be able to find some of the other stuff unless they like re-uploaded they just there's some wild wacky shit that they did <laughs> there's one with like a squirrel like an animated squirrel over the footage and he's like yelling at you to put your 3d glasses on <laughs> 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 um, all right then and uh and no, I have no idea. I've never seen it. You've never seen it? So then Justin Roiland did, essentially, like, Rick and Morty came out of Channel 101. Gotcha. It was Doc and Marty. <laughs> it was, it's literally yeah. a Back to the Future parody. Yeah, yeah. Uh, And it was just, it was just, just disgusting. And uh, Doc was making Marty, like, lick his balls and stuff like that. Classic. It's truly yeah. horrendous. Um, <laughs> but... Not like, much has changed. <laughs> not much has changed, but like, so I, like that to me is some, like, the early bit. stuff that I remember, like, video content on the internet before YouTube. I mean, there was Flash and stuff, but that was always like well, rendered E-bombs on the computer. World. Yeah, yeah, it was classic. And that was those were those were like Swift. GameTrailers.com. Right? Yeah, that was. The I place. don't remember that one because that was where I tried to upload my first video I'd ever like made and put effort into. This is like Game, 2005. GameTrailers.com. Yeah, it was. Bef- it was like right around when YouTube was starting, but it was still before. And I had made a tutorial on how to get the Scarab Gun in Halo Two. Oh, okay. <laughs> how did some, you How did you record the footage? Uh, just into a capture card on a, our family computer. So you had you like wow. you figured out. Those were so do that. rare back then. I wanted yeah. one. It was, it was a bit of a thing. Yeah, a I don't, our computers happen to have one. Yeah, nice. that's funny. You think like oh i'm gonna capture gameplay footage and like back then it would have been like i have no idea how to like yeah. it's literally impossible to do well, this like in like, the back of the computer was the, the the red the white and the yellow plugs. the composite video the, yeah. yeah the composite video and plugs. you had to get like a card to put in your motherboard you know to capture so, like, that there was <laughs> no like, that already OBS. came with my pc it was just or, yeah. like the family pc i should yeah. say and we used it to connect like the like the cable box to it so we could record movies oh. like you would on VHS tapes back in the day. Pirates. Exactly. Nice. It's like, oh, I'm going to rent this movie for however many dollars it is. And keep it but forever. I'm going to keep it forever because I'm a poor high school student. <laughs> <laughs> so like that was like, so you, I think that, you know, Corridor came out kind of like right, like that was like sort of the generation right after that. Like once YouTube came up, then it sort of like, began to establish and there was like freddie w yeah Order freddie Digital. and brandon were like two of the biggest like pioneers for filmmaking on youtube yeah. i'd say and they were uh it's funny because freddie always says that it was daystorm if you know who that is yeah, who convinced yeah. him i don't know daystorm he, power he was another uh, og youtube uh guy he uh convinced freddie to go in on all in on youtube and they're putting out a, just a new video a week and they oh, were wow. roommates with sam and nico from quarter at the time and they convinced sam and nico to also give it a go but they had a every other week schedule. Yeah. And so it was like that for a few years back when views were king. All you had to do was just make a video that got a lot of views. It didn't matter how long it was. Yep. You're yep. good to go. Yep. And they would just make these like special effects short film videos. And that was kind of like the bread and butter. And then eventually they started doing the Corridor Crew, which is kind of the behind the scenes of it. And that sort of took over the like video of the month, which was, you know, Corridor putting high effort yeah, um, I, it's it's funny because all of that was a reaction to how YouTube changed, uh, like the we call it like the algorithm and all that stuff. Yeah. But like it really did change a lot, and it, you know, like I was saying, it was it used to be views, and then it became watch time, and so that completely killed our format. It was like making a, a two videos a month that are about two minutes, so you're making like four m- minutes of video a month compared to say someone like Markiplier uploading an hour yeah. a day yeah. every day. Right? So you, how do you compete with that? You started doing like special effects. Pretty much, yeah. I feel like I feel like everybody here definitely like just doing YouTube in general has like some experience it. with like doing yeah. it. You just like you're watching videos because I mean, what did you what, what what's like the earliest YouTube you remember watching? The earliest YouTube? Yeah, like because we're all the same age basically. Like we're yeah. seeing like who did I watch? Or yeah, what? like what did you watch? Kind of like you, when, when were you sort of like contributing videos or like thinking about contributing videos onto the platform? Pretty late. It wasn't like really. You yeah, didn't think about doing like in like, high school? I uploaded one of my first videos maybe. I want to say like 2011, 12. Nah, that's not too bad though. That's still pretty like, I mean, I was like uploading really stuff that nobody was watching in like 2008, but like that was just my little crappy, you know, I mean, everyone was up. I was uploading in 2006. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, cause I, I, I got a YouTube account. Uh, I named it Ren the Reaper for some wow. reason. I don't know why I've it, changed it since then. Cause I've always hated the name. I don't no, know. I always hated it. No shame. It's epic. <laughs> Not like your Xbox gamer tag name, you know? Yeah. It's better than like Ren the Groper or something. Yeah. Well, the, someone like misspelled it and they dropped the E out of Reaper. And ever since then, I've just been paranoid about that. Oh, no. <laughs> so I was like, okay. So I eventually changed it. But yeah, no, I was just, I was sharing snowboarding videos with my friends. And that was like the only 
thing I used it for. Yeah, it's not like you used it to like make content for other people. It's just kind of like for you yeah. and your friends. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That the was idea definitely of how it started. A content creator didn't exist at no. the time. No. There are some people who are doing that, but that title didn't exist yet. Yep. So your guys' whole thing is just like sort of special effects. I mean, more or less. What? These days, yeah, there was a turning point. Like beginning of 2016 is when we started what is now more or less known as the the quarter crew channel which was more of like it's you guys doing kind of like like more advanced we had video. had the behind the scenes channel i was actually i, st I started corridor in 2012 and i was running the behind the scenes channel so every time there's a new quarter video there's a behind the scenes video mm. that came out at the same time that i had worked on and i was ma basically making a new video every week for that second channel but it was always in supplement to the main channel, the quote unquote main channel. But over yeah, the last right. several years that has now shifted the, to where our quote unquote main channel is the main channel. Crew. So what did you yeah. what got you into doing effects? Because I think that like there's something sort of interesting about like being a kid and trying to figure out, you know, like what am I like, like yeah. what am I doing? Not like because I'm trying to think like I never like had a question about what do I want to do. It was always just like what do I find it's like, interesting? How, how do I yeah, yeah yeah and I think that that came from <clears throat> watching content. So it was like you know watching Freddie W or watching Corridor, and it was like what do I find interesting? And it's like oh like this stuff's interesting, and you know sort of like the engineering brain, which you're you're a degree in engineer as well. Mm -hmm. You yeah, know, you, I you mean, like think of the technical stuff, right? Like the special effects are like the technical things. Ex oh, I do. I'm all about the technical stuff. I mean, it's like. <sighs> Yeah, I, I'd gone to school for mechanical engineering, and I didn't even seriously consider becoming a, a, a YouTuber until I, it was like two months before graduating. And I graduated in spring of 2011, mm. and I'd started learning editing and visual effects a few years before that. Like 2009, I discovered Video Copilot. Mm -hmm. and <laughs> Andrew Kramer. Exactly. God, it just, it blew my mind man. that you could even do any of this stuff on yeah. a home computer. I just I had wow. no idea that this was like a thing at all. And so I, I started messing around with it and I spent some time, but like school caught up to me and I had to like prioritize that if I wanted to not flunk out of school. Mm -hmm. I got put on academic probation twice. Nice. It was rough, uh, but I didn't lose my scholarship and I didn't get kicked out. I, I managed to pull it around. Nice. I had a semester where I, I don't remember what happened, but I was only able to get like eight units or something. It was like part-time. I think I was like, yeah. maybe it was six units, I don't remember. And I think it was maybe partly my fault, but also partly this, like the way that registering for classes work. They would, I don't know how many people, like how, how big of a oh, yeah. is. They're like, they like set up so many classes and they just open the floodgates, yep. but don't worry, they open it in stages. And so you're, if you're at the end of the stage, you're screwed. And then you have to go and figure out, well, what class can I take? And it's like, well, none of the classes are lined up, but these are at the same time or this, oh, I'm gonna yeah. have to come out for one class every oh. single day. Then you have that one weird lab that's like, yes. oh my God, on Fridays yeah, or Saturdays, yeah. or some shit like that. It's like that. a four hour lab because the other labs yes. are taken. So for we, only one credit. Yeah. Yes. And so <laughs> we, I, one semester I had basically jack squat and I'm like, you know what? I'm going to do these classes. I'm going to spend the rest of the semester that I'm not doing these classes trying to do YouTube videos. There you go. And so that's what we did. And I think, you know, if I, if I went and looked at the, that, that time frame, I could probably figure out where it was. Cause that's where we did the most videos on our like channel that we were doing. It was me. Uh, John and his brother David. Okay. Um, and we were doing like skits, special effects, and you know, just sort of like your your classic kind of like early YouTube thing, where it was never about like you. It was like you doing a thing, and like okay. like you know, a, like a skit with like a yeah. weird effect. And it's like, hey, what's a weird special effect? Let's make a skit around that. <laughs> and the videos didn't really make any sense. And there's yeah. like, there's nothing that people really want. Like some, we did a couple of Pokemon videos theme where it was like. It was like people fighting each other and it was all like special effect attacks and stuff. And those blew up. And it was like, oh, like okay. Pokemon, like people like sort of Pokemon, yeah. but it's people instead. Um, and, but it was all inspired by like the early, I mean like actually like Corridor and Freddy W. I mean, they um, inspired me. It's weird that I've been like with Corridor for 10 years now yeah. because they kind of got me into yes. this. Like at one point you were watching them. Exactly. Yeah. As a like fan. a kid, yeah. as a fan. <laughs> And then, and then somehow like that leads you to being able to work with them. And then you kind of just like, I feel like maybe forget about that. Like, a yeah, bit. like 100%. you just don't even think about it. Yeah. Which is sort of freaky. I mean, you forget about it and then you start to realize that there's kids yes. watching Dude, oh my God, you yeah. and that was yeah. you, but now you're the guy inspiring <laughs> <Yeah>. them. <laughs> 
I forget where I was recently, but I kept running into people who were like, oh yeah, I grew up watching you. I was like, oh, don't you're tell like, me that. That's yeah. so weird, <laughs> I've right? never yeah. thought of myself as being old, but you're really making me feel yeah. old right now. Oh, oh, shit. What do you mean you started watching me in middle school? This oh, is how God, I found what? out. <laughs> this is how I found out I'm old. I don't know what's worse, that or, man, I used to watch your stuff all the time. Oh, we got oh. that the other day. <laughs> yeah. we, were at, we were at the bagel shop and this kid, he comes up to us and he's like, oh, like, I love your stuff. And he looks at Kevin, he's like, I used to watch your videos all the time. And I was like, you used to <laughs> watch mean, your videos to? all the time. <laughs> Or they say like, are you still making videos? It's like, uh, yeah, God. man. <laughs> Every single video that you make now, people are like, oh, I'm so glad he's he he decided to make YouTube videos again because oh, you made like, that video like, oh yeah, oh the yeah, I'm yeah. done like a year ago. <laughs> it's a lot better than the the I'm sorry your house burned down. Like it's very it's a nice gesture, but dear God, after are every you person still you run it? into. Uh, it doesn't happen okay. really anymore, but for a long time, that was like the first thing people would say. Like every single person I met was like, they said that. I'm just like, man, please stop. <laughs> Wait, what like, they like I'm, I'm sorry, your house burned down? Yeah, it was just like, oh, okay. oh, I'm so sorry that your house burned down. It's like, I appreciate it. Yeah, but his house burned no down. Idea. Yeah. I'm so sorry. That you yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 um, but... Yeah, I, I think uh, uh, it's fun to, to give a, a little bit of a subtle roast when they come up and say, I used to watch your videos and <laughs> sort of say, you used to, and then they realize how bad that sounds, yeah. <laughs> it's, even if it's true. <laughs> I, so I, I used to try animating myself, like, you know, when Flash animation yeah. was really popular. Oh, I did claymation. I tried. Really? Oh, I've done. I did a couple of those. And too. stick animation. Yeah. Like but stop motion. Flash was kind of hard. I don't even know how you did it. I never figured it out. I think it was like keyframes. Yeah, I, got, I, I got, never got into Flash. I made a Flash yeah. game. I should go find it. What? I got, yes, I got pretty good at Flash, but my animations were, I was a bad animator, but I knew okay. how to use Flash. Okay. Right, so right. Um, and then I would focus on like the more technical side of things. And I remember writing a script. Um, so like in, back in the day, you could do anything on the internet. <laughs> uh, so on Facebook, no, Jesus Christ, MySpace. Um, fuck there we go. Yeah. Throwback. It's wow. the second, HTML. the next one. <laughs> <laughs> um, you could put, pictures into comments on people's pages well you could also put flash files you could put swifts mm. into people's comments okay well swifts can execute action script <laughs> oh, oh no, no so, way oh no and so i made a redirect and so you would it was it was so bad you would just literally wow. post a comment with a swift that was hosted on photo bucket and you could put any link in there you wanted. And it would immediately post to their page. And anyone who went to their page would be redirected to whatever you <laughs> sent the URL to. Oh, my God. Wow. And so what I did, what they, they got smart to it. And so they made it so that people had to approve the comments. Mm -hmm. And so then you couldn't do it anymore. So then what I did is I made the flash file one pixel by one pixel. And I would, oh, people I would like, upload. And so they wouldn't see it. So they wouldn't see it. And then I would upload it without a redirect onto Photo Bucket. And PhotoBucket would let you re-upload files and you could keep the same extension. And so the URL would be the same. And so then once yeah. they approve the comment, because they just it's like a comment, like, hey man, how's it going? And they'd be like, Why is this in my approval? Like there's there's, there's like, but they don't see there's a one by one <laughs> pixel in there. Oh my That's god. That's diabolical. And then, so then you would change it once they approved it. And I would like redirect to this like this picture of like uh, luchadors. <laughs> Like the half, you know, naked wrestling outfit. Very like nothing, nothing classic. bad, but just something where it's like, what, what, why, why is my my don't, MySpace page redirecting to this? Don't people do that with emails too? Like they'll they'll include oh, yeah. an attachment, the just like pixels. a really, really, really yeah. tiny picture, yeah. and have that like stored on a database somewhere, so they'll know if you viewed the email or that photo got yeah. like drawn. All yep. my emails are set to not load images, yeah. So they don't. Yeah, I think I, I did that should, too. I exactly. That too. Yeah, it's fun to open emails and have them keep pestering you. Yeah, I don't. And then you that. just. You just keep hey, man. You reply with stuff just, that, that you know they don't want. I just following up for a third time. Yeah, it's, you know, know. it's like yeah. I, I could respond and say no, thank you, but I got I got things to do. I'm sorry. I just wanted to say about my flash game. It's reminded me. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I had a money making scheme because oh, no. in the old days, this must have been like two th early 2000s. No, anything to avoid getting a real job. No, it was I was like 17 or 16. And there were those flash game websites like Mini Clip and mm -hmm. all those other ones. Albino Black Sheep. Mm. Anyway, I don't. I don't know about that. I, yeah. I had. Yeah. That I, I don't know about that one. one. But they would buy your flash games for like two thousand dollars if they were good. Wow. So I had. A, I was like, I just have to learn flash and make a good game. <clears throat> so I spent like a month just like making a flash game, and I said they didn't buy it. <laughs> well, what, what was the game? Well, actually, it was kind of. I I remind myself. I think what I did was a lot like what people do on YouTube nowadays where it's like they make a video, but it's kind of like everybody else's assets. Mm. So it's like, I think I took 
images from places that were not I didn't have the rights to do and I was inspired by many other games. It was actually so, somebody else's game just reskinned. Yeah. <laughs> no, like I did all the I did all the flash, but okay. it's just like all of the fun everything was basically stolen. It was what was the game? What was the concept of it? I don't it was he he wrote so little of it himself. He can't <laughs> no, no, no. Remember what Basically, it was. I I made the game, and to be fair, this probably didn't know. You were a little spaceship, and like you would shoot little asteroids, and then I made it. <laughs> Just listen, listen, yeah. listen, listen, listen. I made it, and I showed it to my mom, and my mom's like, "Oh, it's like the game Asteroids." I was like, "What game Asteroids?" Oh no! I actually oh, did oh, not no. know that was a game, and then I looked at it and was like, "Oh no!" You <laughs> it, is no it is a game, and it, they did it, it way better yeah. than me. It has to be like in your subconscious, like you yeah. had seen something yeah. somewhere. And that you... one, I went, "Oh no!" And then I submitted it to one of the websites, and they responded back, "Is this not just Asteroids?" I'm like, "Oh no!" <laughs> so I just never made money off it. <laughs> It's Ash. It's Ass Dash Ash, Asteroids. asteroids. <laughs> and it's a I big should, I really, that and, and yeah, and you, yeah. Oh, I should be able to. If I go back far in my emails, I can probably find that game. No, no way. They definitely deleted it. What email? Is it Gmail? No way. No, Hotmail. Hotmail? It's probably gone. Niall read at Neopets.com. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> talking about Neopets, not to go on a huge tangent. My friend and I built a huge Neopets account. I didn't tell you about this. Was this a scheme too? No, we were so proud of it. And then we went to different high schools. And I brought it up later. I was like, talk, years later, I was like, oh, we should check out our Neopets account. My friend's like, ah. kind of cringe. No, he goes, I can't. I don't have it anymore. He gave it away to some girl. <laughs> what? Oh, wow. he, he liked some girl, so he gave her the Neopets no. account. Oh, she was worth it. But it yeah. was my oh, no. account. <laughs> oh, no. And then I asked him, like, did you even date her? No. <laughs> He just gave it it's away. It's better that way. I feel like you're dating someone he learned a based lesson. off of giving them a Neopet account. At least probably. I would have felt better with the loss. So this yeah. is like you worked on this account together? It was our joint account. We worked on it since we were kids. Hmm. I did that with my friend. Uh, we played RuneScape. Did you oh, ever play RuneScape? I never played it. Oh, I, never we so, I can't talk about RuneScape. So ba <laughs> I might have talked about this before, but basically, you know, we were sharing an account. Then he got the account banned in the chat for like saying stuff in chat. And uh, mm. then saying racist things. No, no, it wasn't that, but I still don't want to say what it was. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he did not, des he, you know, he deserved he, he it. But, but, you know, we were trying to get it back. So he like messaged Jagex and he's like, I will literally kill myself tonight if you don't give me my account back. I will actually do it. I'm not even kidding. And they did it. They gave the account back. That is, yeah. I cannot believe that works. I know. I'm like, dude, that's like. <laughs> that's a lot. You're yeah. Still friends with that's, them? that's dirty yeah, though. Yeah. You are. Yep. <laughs> Don't do that. Does he still do stuff like that? <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, we were like 12 or yeah. something. When you're 12, the stuff that I like, thinking back what I did when I was like 12, like when Xbox Live, you could just open hot mic. You, would, I would sometimes just go on with my friends and be like, we're just going to make people mad today. Like that was all we did. Just go on the game and your only goal was to make people mad. Borderline war crimes. <laughs> it's just like, what's wrong with I kid like that. Kids I really like that. You know, like the post-game lobbies. how awful people can be. Children. <laughs> children. It's, it's, it's children always the worst. Yeah. <laughs> you think they're nice, but they're actually horrible, horrible. Do any just, of you guys yeah. miss that? Like the post-game lobby, like local voice chat or something yeah. like that? I like the Halo before where you could yell at the people before the game started. Yeah, exactly. Or when you were close to them, you could whisper to them. I think part of that is just being a kid, though. It's like yeah. there's something about the nostalgia of it. It's not just. No, it's it's do think, nice. Do you think it's just? Yeah, like I don't the, care how toxic it toxic, toxic yeah. it is. I like it. I think as an adult, though, it's weird. Like if you go to somebody's house and they're just like screaming in the mic, like you would like a, as a kid, I would. I'm like, okay, this there's there's something there's something wrong with this. There's guy. something. There's something. Yeah, but then wrong if there's here. like a 12 year old yelling back at him and you can hear it, then it's funny. Yeah, but he shouldn't be yelling at a 12 year old. Well. He, well. <laughs> That's the funny part about it. <laughs> I tend to be a very anti-social gamer, so I tend to not really engage in chat. Online. Yeah, I don't. Uh, I don't do that. Yeah, I, unless I'm gaming with friends, I don't do voice chat. Yeah, my yeah. really. Some people are my friend Zach, uh, who works with me. He is the opposite. He'll tell me he just comes into work. He goes, "Oh, I just made three friends on Fortnite last night." I'm like, "What?" He goes, "Yeah, he." You're like, "What? You're playing Fortnite?" No, he just <laughs> puts the mic in and just just has just becomes yeah. friends with whoever's in the lobby. I made a lot of friends. Like, yeah, on Xbox Fortnite. It's fun. Fortnite. I'm just saying, it's just interesting how there's it's the proof that you're a real Fortnite. I, I just don't even have a mic. Right now. Yeah. Kevin's like plugging <laughs> no. it in and making friends. Yeah, I, I have. I, I never downloaded that. that that dance move. I can't do that one. <laughs> <laughs> I never got into Fortnite. I tried. How long ago? I got. I mean, a couple years ago. OG okay. season one. No, I mean. I we were know. playing in like 2018 before people got giga sweaty. I got really into. Uh, 
Call of Duty mm. Mobile. Okay. <laughs> what? Kind so, of so you're not much of a gamer. <laughs> no, I mean, I, I don't know why I got into this game of all games, but it was like it was on my iPad, and I was able to hook up my freaking like Xbox controller uh, to it. Oh, I bet so, you slayed in it. But, Supposedly, I was only matching up against other people using a controller oh, as well. Because okay. that was what I was saying. I was like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to own face. Yeah. And I, I always did really you well. You keep telling so yourself that you were losing fact. because you were pitted against other controller players. <laughs> the mobile K, the kid, the kids are just like, <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't know, I was only into that for like a little while. Yeah. Were you playing any games now? Mostly Smash Bros. Mm. That's mostly just because that's what I play in the studio. We play like two or three times a day. I probably play about an hour of Smash Bros a day. No. <laughs> wow. Like I'm for the last four years, every day. Oh, which one? Switch? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I never really played Smash Bros before that. Really? really? I, I love playing games. Don't get me wrong. I, I I consider myself a gamer, but like finding time at home. Mm, yeah. No, I mean, like I think play. people that play Smash are like they're like gamer gamers, you know? <laughs> pro they're, gamers. They're pro gamers. It's, I because I'm I was into Smash as a kid, and then I kind of am not into it. But a lot of my friends are, and like what Kevin said. It's it's so simplistic the game like in mm -hmm. its essence like you yeah. play a character you have like a punch a kick and it's like you really have to be really into it's like chess almost yes basically yeah like there's there's somehow so much to learn but you there's actually like not that much going on it's it's very simple but executed like perfectly oh. and so it's yeah. like you know all the moves are fairly simple it's yeah. like you have hit boxes you have times for the moves to happen mm. and all that stuff and. It's just very, very fast paced. Like and you're just trying to predict what your yeah, opponent's and, gonna and, do. You know, and there's a very, very high skill ceiling to Smash Bros. Yes. Yeah. And oh, that's yeah. what I've really learned is that like, you know, at first you kinda just you mash buttons a lot and then you start being like, Oh, I can dodge and I can shield at the right time and yep. and then it just gets deeper Parry. and deeper and deeper. There's we just had a our bigger annual fish. Smash tournament yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. Who's we have the best? one every year. I won last year. Uh this year. I will not say who won, oh, okay. but I will spoil that. that it was not me. Do you always play the same character? <laughs> no, no, I've played a different character in every tournament so far. Okay. And it's just our own little private mm. tournaments. Like if we try to- Do you to... make a video on it? Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you are a degree engineer. You did mechanical? Yes. Uh, where at? University of Portland in Portland, Oregon. How many years did it take you? Four. Jesus wow. Christ. He did it. <laughs> I don't even think I could. I, I don't think I could have even gotten my. My junior classes. year was so intense. I had classes starting at eight ten in the morning, and they would lock us out of the engineering building at midnight. And so I was in there from eight a.m. to midnight, five and a half days a week. Wow. Uh, I would take Saturday all off, and Sunday I'd work like half a day. Ah, to slacker, man. I know. Big slacker. I know. It depended on how much like studying I had to do mm. or homework I had. To. That was usually the thing that required all the time was just doing all the homework oh, and the labs. Is <sighs> my brother was in it. He just he goes. It was just brutal, and like at least it never ends. Well, the university I went to, it's like what's the failure rate of like year one? It's usually pretty high, I'm not right? Sure, fairly high. I mean, failure rate versus people just you're dropping up, out. Yeah. Oh no, that's what I meant. Like. Okay. My like at, at least I went to McGill and my brother talks about it. It's like pretty. St I think it was like fifty percent of the people who start first year are just not in engineering. I think that tracks. Like, yeah. After yeah. that, and a lot of people just don't realize that's not what they want. Yeah. It's like oh, it's, oops, it's all math. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And they're so unforgiving too. Yeah. It's it was yeah. I would say engineering was like. I feel it like weeds people back, out. We've well. sort of gotten a lot of people probably into engineering just doing like sciencey videos, but <laughs> definitely it's it's not fun. <laughs> a large part of it really sucks. <laughs> yeah, I struggled with the math, like the high mm. the high level yeah. math, like like vector calculus and and differential equations were mm. what I struggled with most. Yeah. But. Most of engineering is just like advanced algebra at the end yeah. of the day. It's like, if you know how to like balance an algebra equation, that's like 99%. You, you can do everything in a spreadsheet with discrete steps. <laughs> like you don't need yeah. to know the calculus. You just yeah. do it in time steps. Yeah, there and you, you can get pretty much exactly the answer. Like, your answer is going to be wrong anyways, even if you use the <laughs> math because you're making a bunch of assumptions. So yeah. why, why the hell not add a little bit more with a spreadsheet? Like it works fine. We did was, a whole... The hard part was always like knowing which equation to use at the right time. And that's yeah. why we always got like cheat sheets where it's like you put whatever you want on there. Yeah. You still have to like do the work. Did you take fluid dynamics? Yes. That was that was the lab that hurt the most because it was like a three hour lab for one credit, but I put probably 10 to 15 hours a week yeah. into that class. Yeah. That, that class was the first one to me where I realized that like nothing means anything because it's all based off of like empirical evidence. Yeah, and but like you get everything's all a chart, like number where everything's like yeah. unitless, and you're like, uh, yeah, there's uh, not a single problem you can do that doesn't require you to whip out some just chart, 
It's like, oh, you do this, but then go, you know, go to the chart. Oh, is it a, what, what shape is the object? Go to the chart. <laughs> yeah. And it was like, none of this matters. It's just charts. It's all, it's all <laughs> charts. Thermodynamics could get that way too. Yeah. When you're talking like dew point and Carnot I mean, cycle and stuff like that. I, I think know. you can get the answer to what you're looking for. It's just the, they'll, they'll hand it to you. Just eight pages of math and you're yeah. like okay give me the chart yeah, i'll take the chart <laughs> yeah but Carno i know cycle like... came up in the last podcast too didn't yeah, 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 yeah thermo no carno cycle oh maybe yeah i think we did mention it yeah yeah one of the most interesting things i learned actually this is like a job application test you might get well actually there's two things one is like so adiabatic means that the heat doesn't leave mm -hmm. right yes okay like closed system yeah so if you have a refrigerator in an adiabatic room so a room that no heat goes in or out and you open the door, and the refrigerator is running. Does the room get hotter or colder? Hotter. No. It well. No, it, it stays the same. It depends on the efficiencies of the motors and the motors. motors. Yeah, right. The door yeah. Open yeah, you the open the door of the fridge because the room get hotter. Because it'd be colder. cooling off, but it's going to take more energy. I guess in theory, cool. so you are going to be losing the, change, the, the, the right? like so, cold through the yeah. insulation, or you're, the heat's going to come back in through so the insulation. So in theory, it shouldn't change. But yeah. the problem is that refrigerators are not 100 percent efficient. Yeah. And so you end up producing more heat. heat yeah. So the room will get hotter because the the heat of a refrigerator is extracted to the outside. Yeah. So you, you basically you're cooling the inside. You're you're taking the heat, putting it into a gas yeah, that has expanded and cooled down. It out. And then once it warms up a little bit, you take it, put it out to the backside, compress it, heats mm -hmm. up, ejects it out into the room. So if it's not 100% efficient, you're just generating You're heat. just generating yeah. heat. You've so just you have made a really a, inefficient heater for your room. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But that's the thing that that was the most interesting. And this is something that like it was it's but not like, super intuitive at all. It's purely adiabatic. No. If you take a battery and you use it to run a space heater, the room, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll do a thought experiment. You've got a battery. I like these thought experiments. You've got, a, you've got yeah. like a, let's say like a car battery or something like that, okay. and you're gonna use all the power in it. You can connect it to a space heater, battery. or you can connect it to an air conditioner that has the cold end outside and the hot end inside. <laughs> okay. You can power the air conditioner or you can power the thermal heater, the space heater, which one's gonna run, which one's gonna make the room the warmest? Is there, are we taking into account wind okay. resistance? No. Okay. Um, what's the power draw on each of them? It doesn't matter. It's just, let's just say it's like, per, it's like adiabatic. It's like perfect. I, f I mean, I feel like my intuition is to say the, the space heater because it's designed to heat stuff, but the, would, would, I don't know, would it be the same? It depends on how much relative energy is being generated or I mean, consumed, would it, it rather. It depends on how efficient each system is. I, I, so the heat, the I heat know pump, the answer and I still don't understand The heat pump it. is oh, actually really? like more than 100% efficient, I think. So the heat pump will what? actually what? yeah so what? yeah so exactly Apparently. so the heater the the, the radiant heater the, <laughs> using, the, heat, to will. the heating <laughs> element is a hundred percent ish but the heat pump is more than hundred percent efficient because you're not generating heat you're moving heat and so it also is it's a little bit dependent on what the other side of the heat pump looks like but if it's just normal outside it'll actually heat the room up more because it's it's more efficient oh, to move heat into the room mm. than it is to generate heat in the room. So your so your energy that, is going into moving versus yeah, creating. Exactly. Well, I think that it resist, resistance is like 100 percent efficient in converting the electricity into no, but heat. So we, yeah, but so you're we, not you're yeah. not creating heat. You're moving heat. So oh, you're yeah, cooling yeah. down outside and you're heating up the inside, which is the it's an AC just, but backwards. Yeah, you're just like yeah. I mean, but I guess that, that could make why? sense. Why? Because you're moving it. You're not generating it. But, but why does that matter? But if you're moving heat from the outside in, does that not make it adiabatic? Well, like adiabatic, not? I mean, that, but if you were to sort of just like put the adiabatic room around the whole thing. <laughs> With a little. I mean, adiabatic, adiabatic maybe not even is probably it's not, not even the right sort of sense. setup. <laughs> is, yeah. So it's like you're pumping this liquid outside to absorb yes. heat from the air. Yes. And then. You're bringing it inside it and releasing in. it inside. Yeah. So you're essentially, you're, you're running an air conditioner backwards. You're cooling out the outside and heating up the inside. And that is more efficient than just using a space heater. I mean, yeah. I guess the space heater is technically doing the same thing because it's all still, heat is energy. So it's all energy right. coming from it's, outside it's anyway. The energy is coming yeah. from outside, but here you're using the energy that's coming from outside to bring heat inside. Yeah. No, that makes sense, so actually. It's, it's very, it's, mm. it's very I, weird. I know that there is a thing where they say... But it's like, what's the wattage of the, of the two fans to... You know, heat it's, the liquid it, the and heat then pump will like always win depending I, on I, what's going on. Like, like, what if it's just like a small little like AC and then like an industrial grade heater? I think AC, I think, will always win. No, I, I think there is a thing where, mm. where they will say below it, or there's a certain temperature range where they're like, it's always more efficient to use your heat pump than it is like your heater. The reason if they don't do it is because they're more complicated to build. So, um, 
But I don't think it would. It's accurate to say the efficiency is above a hundred. Well, it, I mean, yeah. I think well, if you were to compare it, it's to, a better use of energy. Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it, I it, feel like more it, BTUs you, you, per you, watt. It's it's above a hundred percent efficiency if compared, it was a space. Heater. Yeah, okay. Because yeah. it's kind of like in chemistry, the the thing that would always throw people for a loop is Kevin. You don't do you know about uh, oleum? Yes. Yeah, so like a hundred percent. So they would go, oh, it's hundred and twenty percent sulfuric acid. Oh, because it has like some extra oxygens in there or something. No, because sulfuric acid it has is sulfur, sulfur dioxide. trioxide with water. Oh, sulfur. So yeah, what happens trioxide. is people will take pure sulfuric acid and then dissolve ozone SO three into it. Okay. So you'll have pure sulfuric acid, hundred percent. Apparently, I don't know about it. <laughs> and then you add sulfur trioxide into yeah. it. So you, but what happens though is if you add water, the water reacts with the sulfur trioxide and makes sulfuric acid. So adding the water won't technically dilute it. Oh, that's so interesting. So they go, so it, like it lasts longer in equations before water starts messing with things. Well, they, it say absorbs that it. They, they say in terms of sulfuric acid, it's over a hundred percent because if you dilute it, it stays, it takes a while to get you can add a bunch of water and it'll still be a hundred. Makes me feel as like something freezing, how you've got like the energy absorption before it actually starts decreasing in temperature. Oh yeah, before again. it like starts crystallizing. Yeah, yeah. it's almost it's, like there's like a buffer. But it's also just kind of like terminology because it's not above a hundred percent. It just yeah, it's, kind of, it's, it acts like it. It's actually part of the process of how they make sulfuric acid because it's uh, I think it's too wild to mix water with sulfur trioxide. It's too reactive, mm. so they'll dilute it in sulfuric acid. And then they put a bunch in, then they add mm. water to dilute that to a hundred. Oh, it's like so it's like a constant process. And then they so take then a they, par portion off, yeah. add more SO3 like to bring it up and perennial then keep soup. diluting. What do they call it? it? Like yeah, the generation. Soup? Generational soup. Yeah. Generation yeah. soup. <laughs> yeah, it is. So I, I basically remember being really confused by that when I was taking it's thermo the for the first time. Around. I was oh, like talking about the soup. I, well, I mean the like the the heat pumping. <laughs> oh, I was just like I'm like I'm like that, that, it didn't make any sense to me mm. then, and that's why I remember it so vividly. Because I was just like, I was like, how how does that make any sense? And it, well, it, it's one of those things where it's like it just that's just how it works. Well, it's like Vsauce Michael said, it's bad vocabulary. They didn't explain yeah. it in yeah. a good way. Probably yeah. Mm. Or you're just a doo 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 poo poo head. <laughs> doo -doo -poo head. Both are possible. What is the worst acid? Ooh. The worst acid? It's probably a combination yeah. of things. Like, or, or what is the most corrosive acid? Like, what's the alien? Yeah. Blood? What acid so, would you not want to stick so your hand I, in? So I think the the general tier, tier thing. So, well, the oh, big yeah. thing that people always say with acids, like they all get their, you know, people are up and. Which one's about. OP though? Uh, like fluoro <laughs> fluoro <laughs> antimonic <laughs> acid is the one that everyone goes like, oh my god, it's the craziest acid out there. I just what, what was it? It's called uh, fluoro antimonic acid. Fluoro antimonic acid. And it's because it's. Like when in on the pH scale, I think it's like negative thirty three or thirty five. Like it's logarithmic, right? Uh, it just means like it's really bad. <laughs> <laughs> but, but pH is logarithmic. Yeah, it is. Right? So it, it is. means it's like extraordinary. So like sulfuric bad. acid, I think, is like negative. I don't know. It's I like thought it went from one to fourteen. Are you sure about this? Oh, you, they just oh never... you didn't know about the big ones, Kevin. <laughs> oh. I think maybe maybe most things just fit in that range. No, no. So like so a super acid. I think is defined as anything. Super acid. It's anything stronger than pure sulfuric acid. That's like what a super acid is okay. defined. I think. Um, and then there's not that many. I think there's like chlorosulfonic yeah, acid. Nothing you hear on this podcast should be taken <laughs> verbatim. <laughs> but and so these things are like so they're like so an acid is defined as something that can. I mean, depends on how they define it. But a lot of them is like it can donate a proton. Okay. That's like one definition. Or depending like Lewis acids, it can donate. Electrons or receive electrons? Oh God! Remember, no, I don't remember. Don't look at do your own research. Do not look at me. Just, just say it. Just say it with the clause of you have to do your own research. Don't take any. No, of just with a grain of say salt. it with an absolute authority. Yeah, no, I forget. Uh oh. <laughs> uh, but either way, it's like they these things can like they can protonate almost anything. Um, so like they're sold, but then they they're sold in like um fluorinated bottles. Because they, they can't. Oh, be like like uh, like, like they're the all bottles are made out of Teflon. Teflon ish type stuff. Because that's what you would the the acid can work in, but it's like you pour it in water, it kind of like explodes. If you were to pour it on the table, would it just like eat through it and you'd have a hole? It's this is the big problem with chemistry. It's like everything has like different reactivities. So it's like, for example, um, people always talk about like strengths of acids. Like, oh, this is a strong acid, this is a weak acid. So it's like sulfuric acid, yeah, is really strong. And like I said, 
it's kind of the definition of anything bigger than that. They call it a super well, what acid. What does strong mean? It just well, there's, there's like so this is the point. No, strong just means its ability to give off protons in water. Okay. So, so it just makes reactions happen faster? Kinda. Or more aggressively? Like it, it can do things that a weaker acid couldn't do? See, this is why it's like, it's, it's like yes and no, but it's like a weak acid, for example, is hydrofluoric acid. I'd put my hand in sulfuric acid. Yeah. It doesn't, you could probably put your hand in sulfuric acid and hold it there for like five seconds and then just wash it off and you'll be fine. Your skin will be really dehydrated. Yeah. You put your hand in hydrofluoric acid. I wouldn't, you wouldn't even, yeah. I wouldn't be certain you're going to keep your hand and you might die. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, and you might die. But the thing is, it's not even going to like hurt. It's just going to. No, hydrofluoric acid. Oh, well, no, 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 no. It, no. it won't hurt at all. At, at, not at the time. It's, it hurts like if you didn't wash it all off and get rid of it. A day later, like you'll you'll have pain inside your bones, and it like um, it also affects nerve endings, so it just yeah. causes them to fire pain signals. Oh, oh, um, that's but nice. then it, it combines with calcium, and okay. it can get to your heart and give you a heart attack because it's like too much calcium in your but, blood. Well, it, like you gotta like, cut your hand off. Well, on it, like honestly, there there are people who got it on themselves that like that is something that you might want amputation. To do. Because, well, no shit. Probably not on your finger. But it's pretty bad. Like there's yeah. stories. I read one of a uh, Australian dude. There aren't that many stories of this, but he was working with it, and he spilled seventy percent acid like on his legs. So he immediately stripped naked, took a shower, uh, like the emergency shower, and then he was at home. I think so. He jumped in a pool in his backyard and waited for authorities. Uh, and they're like, he got to the hospital. I think his legs went necrotic. Uh, they tried to help him, and then they said like three days later he was dead of like multi-organ failure. Yeah, oh my it's God. like super insidious. So and it's like oh if God. you spill it all over your legs, it's kind of a death sentence. I heard like 30 square inches. Yeah, it was like, tw yeah, about yeah. that. Well, you just put a tourniquet on, it's like the only way to... No, it goes into your blood. Yeah, but if you put a tourniquet on your leg... I think it's kind of like too late. Really? Yeah. I don't I don't even, that's not even part of the safety protocol. Because I've heard of a chemical that will like just seep through your, your skin all the way down until it hits your, cause it just like, that's it, just, right? hydrofluoric and carry stuff with it. That's what you're talking oh, about. Oh, that's oh, that's DMSO. Uh, yeah. That's also, that's, it's a dip. They, they use that to actually like, I think in some of the patches to deliver drugs, but if you work with it, you have to be careful cause uh, you can deliver something to yourself. They didn't mean, I'm a, a friend of mine uh, in college uh, in like biology yeah. lab uh, was like, mm garlic yeah it's classic and like yeah. that and the, and the professor on the other side of the room was like what <laughs> and like went running over his head. Like, oh, like, i was gonna say it's the classic if you smell garlic working with dmso it's because you got it on your skin or if you taste garlic sorry yeah because it just gets in your bloodstream yeah it's crazy they can like <laughs> it's crazy. what you can like put a, a tiny bit of it on the bottom of your foot and you'll taste it in like three seconds garlic yeah it's used and it's it's dangerous because if you use it as solvent and you have some toxic chemical in bring it, 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 it brings it through. So you get different flavors. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, that's, oh, no. that's. Imagine you, so you could taste with your feet. You could like put your foot <laughs> and you could, like, taste. I lost my mouth, so I now taste with my feet. You have a little DMSO mm. like dispenser on your toe. Great flavor. <laughs> I don't think it comes through exactly as the flavor as it normally would. It's, it's going to be great plus garlic. You might have to develop a whole new flavor profile. <laughs> oh, oh, it's just garlic and <laughs> garlic mixed with everything. Yeah. <laughs> it's never not garlic. I, <laughs> but yeah, I think that to answer your question, it's like, there's no, it depends on what you're looking for. Like some yeah. acids will be, I think in general, the, all the super acids, getting it on you would just be like in the movies. I think they, yeah, they do fair. violently oh, yeah. react. It would like your skin would start splattering like. Pfft. Like sulfur trioxide, like what is used to make sulfuric acid. I think if you pour it on your, it just like starts like just boiling and vapor comes off. Your skin's turning black and carbonized. Oof. Does that protect it at all, at least a little bit? I think it does. No, if you oh. if you carbonize, if it gets carbonized, it can't go further. Oh, okay. it's like an it's ablative like... skin protection layer. Ablative? <laughs> 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 I think I am it, indestructible, I... but also have third degree. Burn. Well, that's the problem too. Is it generates so much heat, you probably get a heat burn as well. Oh dang. Okay. Yeah, don't get it on you. But yeah, like wood. I guess you know there isn't really wood is insanely resistant to like. You can just put a blowtorch on it. It just carbonizes. Mm. Like, it's pretty resistant. There's chemicals that you can use to dissolve wood, but they're not really acids in a way. Like, they kind of just want to break down the fibers. Yeah, like, so, like if you actually, if you use, like, sodium, um, like, hydroxide, it'll do it. And actually, acid does. Like, it, yeah. it, heat, hot acid does break apart the cellulose. And it will do it, but it's, like, it is... Would, would it be faster through metal, though? 
You know, probably. What do you mean? Like the acid. Oh, me yeah, metal's way more reactive, yeah. I think. Chemistry was my worst subject. I only took one year of it. Same. Yeah, like Chem <laughs> I wouldn't call it my worst, but I, uh, I needed to take one more science credit, and I had the choice between Chemistry 2 or Biology 101, or one whatever it was. Uh, yeah. And I was like, eh. It's my last semester of college. I don't want to go. I don't want to hard. start this. So I'm going to take intro to bio. Turns out it was one of those like weed out classes. For oh. Like oh. So it ended up being my hardest class of the entire like no. year. And that's that's because you, you got that because you dodged chem. Yeah. Uh, and I'm like, serves, and serves you right. Serves you right. <laughs> I, yeah, I accept that. Yeah. <laughs> well, also, like, my best friend was a, a bio major at the time. Mm. He was a guy who like tasted garlic through his hand, and he was like, "Oh, I'll help you with it. It's it's fine." I was like, "Cool," and it, it was not fine. <laughs> and it was not. It was cool. very hard. It, it was, was very bad. Difficult. Really wish I took so, chemistry in hindsight. So why did you guys not like chemistry? I was. Uh, I I like certain aspects of mm. chemistry, but there was like some tedious aspects of it that I wasn't really a fan of. It was very tedious. Yeah, like I forget it, the, the specifics of it. it was some, like I like balancing the sort of equations I, for it. You like that part? <laughs> there was a lot of like kind of memorizing the president's yeah. vibes where it's like, yeah. I'm not interested enough in chemistry mm. to want to learn all these like insane combinations Rules and like, names. Yeah. Cause it's like, Half the names yeah, don't make sense. Like they, they have some patterns, but sometimes they deviate from the patterns. It's just like it's English, it's, right? It's, it's, it's like dumb. road, 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 and you're like, great, this is fantastic. Like, I don't, like, don't want to learn all these stupid edge cases. That's the, my one thing I hate about chem, like just how it's taught. Where I think we ta we did definitely talked about this, where they're like, oh, what's on your exam this week? Oh, I have to, I have to memorize in order the names of the first 20 elements and like their masses. Yeah. Why? Because the teacher Man. doesn't know how to make a test. <laughs> no, it's just like, I remember doing that. And it's just like, I was proud of it at the time, thinking I knew chem. But it's just like, but, but what is this? I, like I said before, the period, periodic table was literally created as a reference this, yeah. table. That, so you don't have to memorize yeah, it. Yeah, like, defeats the entire purpose. <laughs> teach me why I can turn grape... Or, yeah. or like gloves into grape soda. Like teach me that. Yeah. And then we'll work I, through those problems. Teach me how to make methamphetamine. Yeah, I would, I I would be A plus teach me how to make like a variety of reasons if I knew. And how do I make mustard gas? Make but even just like you're saying. <laughs> Maybe not that one, Kevin. <laughs> making it more practical because I remember learning diffusion and stuff and the examples they would always give were so abstract. But the, every, all my friends would always be like, oh, it's so like when someone farts in the corner of the room, like... How, the, how it travels to the other side and suddenly they're interested because the they find it smell. they find it kind of <laughs> funny <laughs> but like the examples they'd always give were like oh your mom came home with like you know whatever the something. teacher should just like rip a fat one in class <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you know exactly the radius of <laughs> the people in the death zone and who we save <laughs> If Nigel can smell this in one second and Will smells it in five seconds, how fast does it move? <laughs> the speed of smell is proportional to yeah. the density of the <laughs> yeah the cloud. No, I I think the I, I didn't like chem too because do you remember ice tables? I don't know if you guys saw them no. like ice tables. They were called ice tables. They were called something I mean, else. At, this at was the high crap school. Parties, they're ice, ice tables. Ice tables. <laughs> yeah. Oh no, no, not the ice. <laughs> no, it was <laughs> it was in the same realm as like titrations. Where they're like, okay. they're like, oh, you have like a, a solution of, of like an unknown or a pH of this, and they show you the chart of the titration, and you have to like calculate. This conversation is giving me bad memories. I know. I'm yeah. saying that I have bad <laughs> memories of that too. Lame. I didn't like it. What I wanted to do as like a good thing for a teacher, because a common titration is I, not common, uncommon, but people use cyanide to titrate, or you can you can t cyanide you can titrate against cyanide. And what I thought would be funny is having some sort of demo, or no, sorry, it was that there'd be like three unknown powders, like they're just white powders, and the teacher brings <laughs> them in, in unlabeled yeah. bottles, A, B, C, and he's like, one of them is like sugar, one of them is just cyanide, and one of them is <laughs> well, like, oh, there's, there's only one, one way. Way. Yeah. No, there's only one way. <laughs> <laughs> And it's like, you know the obvious is to, is to taste it, but it's like the risk is just too high. I, so I, showing cannot, the, I can't possibly think of any other way of doing that. Call the saying, showing the class, <laughs> It would kind of be a stunt, but like showing the class being like, if I mess up, I'll just be dead. They all look the same. I can't tell the difference. So I'm going to do like some chemistry for you to, and then at the end, like take a scoop of one of the white powders and be like, oh yeah, it was sugar. I was right. But like that was, that's the basis of chemistry is to be able to like, you know, figure things out without having to necessarily die. Yeah. That's how they would have done it in the good old days. I know. Yeah. Well, it's a small a amount line of, of chemists. They, you, just, like, they light up for work and they just come you can in. Smell, you yeah. can taste a small amount of cyanide and be fine. 
But I just thought the idea would be like the you are using like base level science yeah. to be like, I'm gonna one of these could kill me, but I'll figure it out. And as a kid, I'd be like, I would think that's amazing. But instead, they just do like some weird titration that no one cares about. Yeah. Yeah. Did you? What did you do in uh, for college? Like uh, design? Like any design project? Senior design <clears throat> or? Yeah, my senior design project was a motorized time lapse dolly. Oh, nice. Oh, cool. I built something like that. Yeah, I but tried building something like that. <laughs> Try? You didn't I tried. Tried. Kevin. Well, no, I didn't no, no. people. <laughs> so I got like you know I got a motor, I got a string, and what I wanted to do was be able to time it so I could like you know I know exactly how long it would take to get from this end to that end and you know you could write some like library where you could like have an lcd screen and then turn yeah. a potentiometer but the lcd screen was too hard so i just put like a potentiometer that yeah. controlled the pwm to the motor so that was exactly what i did was it? <laughs> exactly but you know what the difference, you know what the difference the was the lcd screen oh, i didn't even consider the lcd screen <laughs> yeah. i went the I lcd like screen route dc motor to a little potentiometer yeah. and like some d cell batteries on a little thing yeah, yeah. Right. the difference rails. i guess and then like how much did that cost you to like build it was probably like oh. It was much. It was like no under two hundred dollars. Yeah, but you could total. buy one for like two hundred dollars, a real one that actually works. <laughs> Not twelve years ago. Oh really? Wait, how oh, old were you when you made it? Uh, twenty one, twenty two. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it was my senior year of college, so okay, it was okay. like, um, yeah, yeah wanna... it was. It was right around. I was finishing up. I was like, man, this is a pretty cool thing. And then the big Iceland volcano started erupting. Mm. This is around ten years ago. Wait, or is so. that where you're? from or no 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 okay, no. okay but yeah what is what is the relevance of this I'm, I'm, I'm getting to it. okay, so, okay. Uh, a big eruption that took place over the course of like two weeks and this this uh filmmaker photographer went out there with his own mm. sort of like it wasn't DIY, DIY one? but it was very like indie uh mm, hardware like kind of hodgepodge together yeah and it was but it was a motorized dolly that would just take you know five to thirty minutes to go like a few mm. feet and he just yeah. had his freaking camera just taking photos every few seconds, put it all together as an, as an image sequence, and you got a time-lapse video. Cool. Here, I'll show you mine. This was, it took me a very long time to make this. <laughs> See, that's already like 10 times more advanced than what I had. You can hear the techno music in the background. So it had like a bunch of different axes. That's actually pretty cool. And it had like an LCD where you could like program all the moves and everything. Is this your final yeah. project? No, I just did this. For this is like my project, for me. <laughs> See, that was the thing. The, my senior design project was less about the actual like final result mm. and more about the process. There's yeah. So much like. Like that's what it's about anyway. I think. Exactly. Yeah. It's like we had to get uh, so some sort of mentor, like a professional mentor. Yeah. Like you had to get all the, like the, 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 the very stages of it. product development, kind of like the design. Yes. You had to have a mock-up design made of it and all this stuff all the different papers and you had to do a presentation at the end of the semester twice and yeah the, whole P, the thing. pdr and at the end of it all i'm like well, i mean i guess technically it works i literally had it working through my graphing calculator that's <laughs> that pretty, was that's that was what i used to awesome. program my my camera i had a dslr and instead of getting an intervalometer for like, oh you programmed an intervalometer and it was just yeah kind of, i literally I, just i programmed I, I forget i don't even know how to program calculator anymore but ti-84 i yeah. knew how to do that back in the i think day. i did that something similar because i wanted to take a time lapse but i couldn't get an intervalometer so i did i did something so you weird can, in bootleg you, you just get like a freaking like headphone cable that goes out of the top of the calculator yeah. into the the camera you can use it as like a little interrupter or something that's yeah yeah, yeah i guess you can just i remember some sort of I wow i don't know if funny. i did it or that was one of my options because from high school i had a graphing calculator but i remember I, could, I was trying to make an intervalometer yeah. and i did something very I didn't crappy write the code i just googled it oh no 100 i was like okay i just got to put this into my calculator i'm pretty sure that's what yeah. every yes. software here does <laughs> What else, what's These days you don't even have to Google it. You just tell chat. Oh my GD. god! <laughs> yeah. we, we've been do doing GD. that. It's terrifying. I said, I I was like, uh, write a. Do you want to describe what chat? GP chat GPT is an evolution of uh, OpenAI's most recent language model, I guess. So you can ask it questions. Model. Yeah, and so you, you can, can converse talk with to it. it. You can ask questions, and it can talk back and like formulate answers mm. and tell stories, write stuff for you. But the most interesting to me is the fact that it writes code. It knows yeah. every programming language. I asked it to draw a happy face on a GLCD for an Arduino. Write code what? to draw. Write Arduino code to, to draw a happy face on a GLCD, and it did it. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like a graphic. LCD yeah. display where you draw pixels. Okay. So you'd normally have so to like it, go through individually yes. and like and change it, like, the bits. It, you, it found a library, it used the library, and it and like made like the th couple of like drawing of this, drawing of that, drawing of that to make like a circle and then like an eye and then like an open mouth. 
and I was like, I couldn't believe it. Like this is amazing. Like this is. I didn't run it because I didn't have the LCD that it. Oh was right, yeah. But See, it looked like it would work. I know very little coding. Like I took C plus plus in college, but I know nothing of it now. And I've, hmm. I've this year I've Same. started learning a little bit of Python, but like. I, I would not call myself even remotely proficient at Python. And so I, I can see the whole like uh, AI uh, written code as being a very, very good learning tool if it's yeah. used correctly. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's like, okay, I have no idea how to code, but if I ask it to code the thing that I want, you got you always got to start with like, I want to do this thing. Exactly. And then you kind of work backwards from there. And yeah, so and then you're like, like, oh, how do I like, how do I change it to do this like faster or slower? And then like, boom, you just learned how to do that. Yeah, yeah, and exactly. Then, and so then you start learning, and, okay, I got my whole thing. I don't know how any of this works, but you start learning how to alter various bits of yeah. it. And over time you start learning how to actually write code. Yeah. It does a lot, it seems to rely a lot on libraries. So it like uses, like it, it kind of needs to have something that has like more complicated code buried in something else. Cause we tried a couple where we said like, you know, you write Arduino code to move a servo uh, without using a library. And I think it just, it was like some nonsense. Like it mm. couldn't, it, like you just couldn't do it. It was just too much. Or like to turn a digital pin on using ports, which is sort of like the, the more complicated way of doing it. That's not digital, right? It's kind of what Arduino is hiding from you. Okay. Um, and it kind of, it definitely sort of just didn't. It's like so digital write is, is derived from port or something. Yeah, so writing ports, you're like, you're, you're storing memory on the chip. And those, that, those memory cells are, have like essentially little wires that go out to digital pins. Okay. So if you want to write to a port, you're like, literally like you're taking a, a byte and you're writing a byte somewhere into memory. Like you're, you're just literally saving. Yes. I kind of regret asking about this. <laughs> it's like digital write says change this bit here it changes it and that bit physically is attached to the pin oh so it's like a sign okay nope nope, nope we're done i don't want to know anymore <laughs> well okay but, we can talk about taxes <laughs> a little bit <laughs> everyone's no, like I, please I, okay. god talk about taxes instead. But like i i've i've been really wanting to get into like the physical programming side of things like i really want to make like a little garage for my one wheel that you basically roll up to, <laughs> oh like, like a dog house a bit of a doghouse, but like you roll up to it and you get off and like if you skid stop up to it, it it'll automatically uh, start lifting these little hooks and it grabs like the front of the board. So it lifts the board <laughs> until it's vertical and leaning it against like, Ooh, the wall. Oh, that's cool. And, and then once it's like fully upright, a little charger plug Greg goes in his plugs butt. itself oh. in. And then Just once, make sure you don't get too close to the whole contraption. Did you see that weird Tesla one? It was like an octopus arm, and it would kind of like yeah. zero like, yeah. in on it. And then that came out a long time ago. Yeah. And nothing has nothing come out came. They realized that people would just destroy it. Also, it might scratch the paint on your car. So they <laughs> and it's like, yeah, who knows? They realized that it just. Do you always stupid. run into the problem where your one wheel isn't charged when you want it to be because you forget? I mean, it's happened. It does happen. Yeah. But I yeah no, I'm pretty good about making sure that doesn't happen. I have my I'm own not, like portable no, batteries. Kevin now. has like scrambled eggs for brains. So. <laughs> But like that's that's an idea for like a video that I'd love to do. I'd love to just build this thing and make a video around it to justify doing it. Yeah. Uh, but the barrier has always been the coding side of like Arduino, for instance, yeah. or Raspberry Pi. Like I know nothing yeah. about that world. Yeah. I'm sure I could learn it. See, that's the thing. I'm like I'm considering it because I'm like I know I could learn it, but I ain't nobody got time for that. Yeah. I'm busy. <laughs> software is like the hardest part of everything. Like anything ever that's good is only good because it has good software. It's so it's so oh, common yeah. to find stuff with really bad software that just is like you realize that you know yeah. ninety percent or ninety nine percent of the man hours need to go into that. The user experience is everything. Yeah, it's everything. It's like they're like oh, cool. <laughs> we built this cool hardware thing, and it's like great. But how do you make it work reliably? You yeah, know? And it's like software. Like my rocket knife. Everybody was yeah. like, "Oh man! Like all you got to do is like add a guided missile oh, system yeah. to it." <laughs> right. It's like great. That's you mean all. you mean the the ninety nine percent of the work? Yeah, like, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone thinks it's so easy to do that stuff. It's like it's yeah. not at all. Like it's it's. <clears throat> I mean, we we have like uh, we were talking about going up. We we just had a silver mine. We did a little bit of the silver mine every damn podcast for the next <laughs> month. But that's how much um, fun it was. Wait, we, silver mine? We went to the silver, oh, I'm glad you silver asked. mine. Cerro Gordo? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I went there last year. It was, really? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah he was talking, you guys mapped the, the cave. The entire mountain. Oh, that was you guys. And every building, yeah. You didn't cool. have the yeah. balls to map the entire cave system? We I, we, we, I mapped what I could of the cave system. They didn't let us go deeper. <laughs> oh, it's oh. good. It's horrifying. <laughs> it's pretty scary. Yeah. Like, we went into the surface one off to the side rather the than the one in the in building there? that goes, like, straight down yeah, yeah, a thousand yeah. feet. Mm -hmm. And so, like, we walked in there all the way to the end past, like, his, like, little Christmas yeah. thing. Yeah. We recorded a podcast there. Really? On that chair. That's cool. That's pretty cool. 
Yeah, uh, Brent, right? Yeah. Brent Underwood. Uh, very cool guy. Very yeah. cool area. I really want to go back. And so when we left, we one-wheeled down the entire mountain. Whoa. Yeah. You should come with us next time we go. I think oh, we might to. be going in like a, you know, a month or two. Yeah. Because okay. we wanted to do like what it's I want to do. It's going to be even colder. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, it might be snowed in. Yeah. Last I heard, a part of the road actually like it's, fell away. They, they fixed it. Fix yeah, it got repaid yeah. right before we went Like up. the day before we came, there's a grader coming down like the yeah. mountain. Yeah, like literally, we we like ran into it on our way up. Dang. Yeah. We want to try to fix the uh, their water though, because they're trying to, they're pulling water out of the mine on the 700 level, and oh, so that's right, yeah. Uh, I was like, I'm trying to think of like, okay, how do you do all this without using software? Because software is like, like to me, software is cool if you're Point making failure. something for yourself. But let's say something goes mm -hmm. wrong. Oh, the the it's in under the underground. It's like moist in the cave or whatever. Who knows? And it kind of corroded and it messed up. What do you do? They have to go and buy an Arduino and build it. Like, no. Yeah. It's like you just how do you make it so that they can like buy a part number and fix it? And it's like either something that's modular that you can buy off the shelf that you can like just put an SD card with a program on it or something like super easy to do, like something that's right, pre built. Yeah. Or like one of the ideas was to just use relays instead. Relay. So it's like to measure the like the drainage of their uh, sump that they have filled with water. So there's well, it's from the mine, but basically uh, there's a big pool of water 700 feet below the mine entrance and it fills up with water and they want to be able to drain it out, but they want it, don't want it to drain too low because then the pump loses its prime. And so it's like, okay. how do you do that? It's like, oh, you could put an Arduino Hard and question. you can measure it. But it's like, nope, just use a, like a relay instead of software because software yeah. like always causes problems unless it's really good. It's like, <laughs> you know, make it so that when the switch comes up, it like, okay, cool. Like the like floaty comes up, it turns Perth. the relay on, the relay latches itself on. And then once it comes all the way down to the bottom, and it hits another switch, the relay unlatches itself, and the whole process starts over again. It's like you could do that with an Arduino with software, but now you've got you know this sort of nightmare yeah. thing, which is like software and keeping. It's just like ah, it's like I try to I try to do <laughs> everything. Simple. Yeah, I the try to keep it super is simple. The simplest engineering. Yeah, and software never makes it simpler. So it's always the hardest part. How did you map the mine? I used a phone app called Polycam. Oh my god, it's so cool. You, yeah, is that the one you were and using? It's the only one. It's yeah. like, it's, that's the one, yeah. Well, th these days I've been getting more into neural radiance field, yeah. which is a different type of photo scanning, but it's the same sort of process. So Polycam's like optical... app is still like the, the most polished. Okay. Yeah, I feel like you're kind of uh, like kind of crackhead for NURBS recently. Pretty much. I yeah. mean, it's like it's a brand new thing, and I don't know. I feel crazy because it just feels like the future of how we're going to like create videos, or, and at least for visual effects. because. Yeah. Let's say you, you have, we, one of our video ideas we have is like a VFX bad boy, like do a location scout, go to like a really nice, like expensive mansion and just have like some 360 cameras, like yeah. sitting out of a backpack or something. And you're just like, okay, you're getting a good tour, but getting, having the 360 camera rolling on everything the whole time. You're stealing locations? Yeah. You, you, you're oh. basically stealing locations. I keep holding my mic off to the side. Oh, that's cool. Um, that's a really good idea. <clears throat> and so it's like, now you have this whole very nice high quality set or location that you can reframe and film any shot you want from any angle you want. Yeah. And it looks like video footage. Whereas with like polycam or any sort of like photogrammetry sort of uh, technique, you you end up with a, a mesh. Right. Which you then have to like process, clean up, you have to then light and render. Whereas with um, with nerfs, it's just, you know what up, Michael? Have you heard of nerfs? I really have to pee. <laughs> and so I had to walk across. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> You're trapped, we got have you. I have, to, I have to pee too. Have I heard of nurse? Ner nerf. Neural radiance fields. Ner nerf. Nerfs. Wait, these are the things you've been tweeting about nonstop. Yeah. <laughs> they're, they're amazing. It's cool stuff. I, I don't understand anything about them, but it's... It's it's just like a way to like reframe video after the fact of any angle, any position in 3D space. It's like a viewpoint recreations. But it also creates the shadows, the reflections. Yeah. It's the real thing. Yeah. It's just it's Not figuring real. out what something looks like from a certain angle and a certain perspective. It's like it doesn't know what the actual reconstruction of any so of it is. So what are you gonna do with them? You can create footage, you can create uh scenes, you can have uh, one of the things that I liked uh is you can scale camera moves. Let's say you 3D track a camera move with a real camera. That's the normal first step you do if you want to add CGI into it. You gotta track it so you can recreate the digital camera. But you can then just take that digital camera and put it in any scene you want. So you can have the exact yeah. same camera move in multiple different locations at different scales. So you can make someone really tiny, someone really big. And you can decide all that after the <clears> fact, <throat> not live in the, in the location. Yeah, exactly. But the thing is though, is that when you get it out, 
it looks like real video footage. It's kind of like the difference between uh, like, you know, Princess Leia or Grand Moff Tarkin, all this really intense effort going in to create a CG human head and face, rendering skin with the subsurface scattering and all oh, this yeah. stuff, the pores stretching, yada, yada. And then deep fakes come along and it's like, yeah, computers are just really good at drawing this specific face from any angle you want, from right. any expression you want. It's just really good at making it. This is like a deep fake, not of a person, but of the world. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and on that note, I got to pee or I'm going okay. <laughs> to wet myself. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, so that's kind of what I've been obsessed with lately. Uh, Polycam is very much so trying to go a different direction because they, they both have the same starting point. Polycam is a little bit more industrial, I think, right? Like <laughs> Utilitarian. Yeah. Yeah, and, and uh, I, I still use Polycam all the time. Right. If I want to get a 3D model, I use that. Right, for like printing something. Printing something, I have a digital scan of me in a costume that I've mm -hmm. rigged up and load it up into AR on my phone. So I can literally hold my phone and point at like the wall here or the ground and have like a giant 10 foot version of me dancing. Wow. Fortnite Feud Fortnite live Fortnite and dancing. rendered live on my phone. Flossing? <laughs> yeah, yes, maybe not flossing. If I could find the animation for flossing, maybe. <laughs> so what other stuff are you doing like, like building wise? Because you've always sort of been <clears throat> like tinkering with crap. Yeah, I mean, I'm, the biggest things I'm into, like visual effects, one wheels and drones. Those are like my three passions essentially like and it kind of fluctuates what if you like, combine well, them all into a flying one wheel that makes that doesn't, the that, that doesn't actually exist yeah my current obsession is definitely one wheeling i've got several of them now and i'm about to build another diy one my current diy one sitting over there it's got <laughs> a much higher voltage battery and all that other stuff in it so it's i want to get to a point where i can just climb like a vertical wall <laughs> Oh, You're gonna yeah? have to put drones on it, but backwards, upside down, so they suck you into the wall. Maybe, maybe <laughs> yeah. you can help me build my dream one wheel, dude. That's a video. Yeah, I'd be down. What's it, your dream one wheel? A one wheel that doesn't send them it's into like the a, road. It's like a four foot tractor tire, but it's still just <laughs> oh, the shit. original one wheel like frame on top of it. That would. <laughs> <laughs> it's certainly that's that's what's so exciting for me about the whole DIY movement now. For the longest time, yeah. all the firmware has always been locked behind future motions like stuff and so it's never been really accessible but now with the open source stuff mm. uh, it's called a VESC uh, and it's open source speed controller for motors essentially and now you can I'm thinking of like a little stool one wheel like instead of having two platforms on either side imagine taking both of them putting it above the wheel and you kind of just sit on it yeah but like it's not practical at all but I kind of want to build that you can do that with a monster truck tire too I don't think you, I don't think you yeah. can do the tractor tire why I think that the the amount of torque it would take to get going would cause it to accelerate really slowly. That's fine. Oh, I'll just too. put a bigger motor in it. I also and, feel and like it would batteries. be hard. You need something that's going to like balance horizontally on its own. So you need, just like, round a, the you need like a wide, like a flat. These are all solvable problems. Yeah. Because like if you lean forward, it has to torque against you leaning forward. So you'd have to be like really leaning forward to be able to get a bunch of torque on the tractor tire to get it going. Yeah, I mean torque and, and KV rating are two hmm. big things to think about when doing something like that. As long as you have enough torque, it's totally doable. You just go, you just accelerate slower. You or also you, wants you to like flip, it wants to flip you backwards. Because it you backwards, yeah. Because yeah. the you well, are no, leaning forward, so which the allows the does, motor to speed up. Yeah, so it, so you so just have it. tractor tire though, to get the tractor tire moving, you need a lot of so torque. So you would just have to be like. So you leaning would have to provide enough yeah. counter torque uh -huh. in you order put, to actually get. You could put weights on the platform. You could put weights oh, yeah. on the platform, but that would probably. Or you would just learn how to balance on it and. Because that's the thing about a one-wheel. You would probably have you to like can, put your you feet can in there and then like on lean way forward. Yeah, exactly. Forward. I think you'd have to lean way forward, yeah. and that would be freaking terrifying. Yeah, that's... No, I think you probably wouldn't have to lean forward at all, you really. You so? just like lean forward a little bit, and it acts like its own throttle. It's just like, okay, you're leaning. There's a little bit more weight this way, and so now it's going to speed up the motor and you just go. It would just be like a slow... Maybe like on a on asphalt it would be fine. I'm just trying to think, like, if the tires are too knobby... Like trying to imagine, I don't know. I think you might die doing this. You should do it. Yeah, yes. I'm, I'm super down. I, people have done it with bigger tires and bigger. Have like, they? What are the What are like the consequences? Small. How does hmm? that How does it behave differently doing that? Well, the ones that I've seen online just aren't very good. Okay. That's the main thing. If you want an actual like, it's only really just been the last couple of months that the DIY programming behind mm. One Wheels, open source One Wheels, have finally gotten good enough. Uh, you can. So this is not even a one wheel anymore. You're, you're. It's technically not. You're, you're right. generifying the uh, yeah. the brand name exactly. right now. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah, it's it's Kleenex Jello one hey, wheel. They've <laughs> had their run. They've had their shot. Yeah, you got. You had. You it's coming. Well, they've it's had a coming. monopoly on it they the have. last several years. Yeah. No one's been able to compete against them. Yeah. They have all the patents. 
but they can't do anything about open source stuff. So that's your next thing is making a one wheel that is going to break both your collarbones. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe all three of my collarbones. <laughs> all three collarbones. Wait, is it one collarbone or is it two collarbones? How it's does two. It work? It's two? <laughs> I mean, I, I've only broken one. Okay. But I've broken three more bones <laughs> since then. In the last year and a half. What were you doing by, may yeah, I ask? Yeah, year and a half, four bones. What were you riding? <laughs> one wheels. <laughs> you said you went 30 miles an hour on one? Yeah. That's that insane. was out at the Salt Flats like a month or two ago. And there was a very, very generous tailwind. Oh, gosh. I've and it was I, not that long after it rained out at this, uh, it was a dry lake bed. And so the ground was like literally glass. You could try playing this down as much as you want, but that's terrifying and I would never do it. It was super scary. I was if, all if padded. Kevin I had wouldn't all do it, that no. means it is no. genuinely yeah, that's, terrifying. Because that, 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 you know how they just like, how they just stop working? Like once you go too fast and they can't bounce you, you, you need anymore, like a little jado the front on the just front. digs into the ground really? and you get yeah. launched off of it. You There's no jado. speed limit. There's just a torque limit. And so yeah. if you over torque it, it can't See, bounce you See, that's the opposite problem to the tractor tire. Little kids can go really fast on them. Yeah. So it's like you're providing too much counter torque and it can't keep up. Yeah, I can't like back, keep and the you. The tractor tire would be the opposite. It's like you'd, you'd have a harder time providing the counter torque it needs because it's so big. God. Solvable problem. Yeah, if I'm, I'm wanna, serious. If, if you want to do that, I'd help you with but that. But why, yeah. why are you? How big is the tractor tire? Like, like you know, one of those big like ones, like that's maybe like that three, tall. four feet. That's like you know, yeah, like a hundred. I was gonna pounds. say, why don't yeah. you? Oh, yeah, yeah. Why don't you just up, try a regular tire? My idea was to put like those bicycle <laughs> hub motors. Yeah, I'm with Nigel. Do a regular tire first. Like, why are you no. going from this to like? Because I want it to be like that. Like, you could do a bicycle tire. You could do true. two two bicycle tires no. side by side. I want to do. Like, I, I understand what Kevin's saying. He's like a dually. That that is kind of cool though, because then you could have zero point turning. Yeah. Oh, you have them spin individually. Yeah. <laughs> That's a whole you other. You think this was going to be That's a better idea. I was, I was thinking of just having them so you have like a nice kind of flat. Light. Like it like lies flat almost because it's like two. Yeah. Does that make sense? Instead of having one flat bottom, it's just. Ding, ding. Well, like a semi truck tire is kind of flat. I think they are like basically all, flat. They also probably weigh 150 pounds. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. I mean, I think it's I think it's very doable. I think. Okay, cool. Cool. Maybe. It's just a matter of finding the right motor, I think, at the end of the day. Yeah. I excellent. wanted to use those bicycle hub motors because those are kind of wide already and they might fit in like, you know, I'm not going to give you my idea. You're not stealing this. This is proprietary <laughs> Kevin information. On that note, thank you very much for listening <laughs> to the Safety Third Podcast. Thank you very much to our guest, Sir Render. Go check out his channel. It's YouTube. You search Sir Render. He has uploaded a video last year. <laughs> Which yeah. would be this year by the time this video comes out. So if you want to see so more regular content from Ren, he's on the Corridor Crew channel. Yeah, pretty much all my effort right now is yeah, Corridor stuff. Yeah. If you want to see cool visual effects, the scale of ants, the scale, the scale of things. Video. You do a bunch Ooh. of scale videos. There's like something like twenty quadrillion ants in the world, like two and a half million ants that for every is person. That's terrifying. I wish I didn't know how, that. Two hundred million. Uh, Did 20 you say quadrillion? So how many per two person? And a half million. Two and a half million per person. Oh. I don't know. Everyone can own two and a half a, million ants. If I ever, if I had a dollar for every ant that existed for me, I'd have two and a half million, <laughs> million dollars. <laughs> yeah. Can I? Can we fight two and a half million ants for a Patreon extra? <laughs> can we? How much money would that cost? Okay. Okay. Where do we, how do, who, who do we buy the ants from? Or can we use fire? Can we use t weapons or we is it? Flo flo what's, the, what's the acid? The floral antimonic acid. Floral antimonic acid. It has the word ant in it. <gasps> there you go. We're going right. to. Whoa. <laughs> okay. yeah, thanks for having me, guys. Yeah. This was a lot of fun. Yeah. Thank you to everybody who supports us on Patreon. Uh, their names are flying across the screen. Uh, I'm going to take one of them right here and I'm going to put it inside Nigel's butt. Classic. Cough it out. <laughs> 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 uh, if you want Safety Third merch, it's probably all out of stock. I don't remember. I don't know if we ordered more. It's safetythird.shop. If you want any of the extras that we've been doing, uh, some are exclusive to Patreon. Some come out early on Patreon. Uh, support us, and we'll make more of that dumb stuff. And we can build a set, and we can have people come there instead of stealing other people's offices. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. All right. And then someone say bye, and it cuts halfway.